Hello everyone, welcome to the Ionic YouTube channel. My name is Logan Braid, I'm a developer advocate here at Ionic, and today we're gonna talk about getting started with Ionic. Now some of you might be wondering, and the answer is yes, we did do a video similar to this a few weeks ago, but in this video, we're gonna be talking about getting started with existing web applications. So if you happen to have an existing web application that you want to be able to run on iOS or on Android natively, this will be the project for you. In this video, we're basically gonna take um, an existing Angular application, uh, we're gonna install a capacitor, and we're gonna see how to get it running on iOS and on Android. So with these types of projects, it is important to note that size, scope, and scale does matter. So um, obviously I'm working on a small project to make this go as smoothly as possible. But if you happen to have larger projects, you might have to troubleshoot or do anything. But if you do, be sure to check out the Ionic blog. The Ionic blog has a ton of great information like tutorials, product updates, announcements, and more. For more information, be sure to check out the Developers tab on Ionic.io to view our docs and join our communities. We have an active community of Ionic developer experts on our forum and Discord that can help you through your Ionic journey and build the applications that you want to build. Our forum, docs, and Discord are great resources for any questions, comments, and feedback that you may have to supercharge your applications as you're building them. Links will be posted down below. Now with that said, let's go ahead and jump into it. Go to Capacitor, JS. With the CLI docs here. Okay, so before I kind of dive into this, uh, the first thing you want to do is check out the first part of this video through, for the installation process, because essentially you want to download Node, JS, NPM, Xcode, Android Studio. Um, the other part is, so there is the Ionic CLI component. You can still download that if you want to, if you have like components that you want to use from like the Ionic framework or anything along those lines. But the big difference here is, is that we want to set up a capacitor. So capacitor has its own CLI. Um, and honestly, the one, the stuff that's set up for the Ionic CLI, the capacitor CLI and functionality is actually baked into the Ionic CLI. I don't know how much of the features cross over, but the capacitor CLI is slightly different. And uh, it's essentially created for if you have an existing web application, but you're not going to be using any of Ionic's tooling to do it outside of Capacitor. So you're just looking to make your applications cross-platform and not necessarily use, it, use any other part of Ionic. So I have it pulled up here. Uh, I have the Capacitor docs pulled up. And what you wanna do is you wanna go through the introduction and environment setup, make sure that you are good on this front. The big difference with this is that you have to install CocoaPods. So, um, and then also do some configuration for Xcode and command line tools. So as you can see here, um, you wanna be able to download Node, check the version, uh, run this command for Xcode, for command line tools. And then you also want to set up Homebrew, which will then allow you to install CocoaPods. This is absolutely vital to the install process. Your applications will not work if you do not install CocoaPods. I've already done it. And so I don't know like necessarily how to back it out from Brew and I don't really wanna go through that process here. I feel like that'd be more confusing, but this one pager will pretty much cover everything that you need to do for iOS, Android, CocoaPods, to get it going. Once you have that set up, you wanna to go to the installing capacitor page. And what you wanna do is you wanna add capacitor to your web application. So what I have here, I have an existing Angular application, very similar to the, uh, the application that was in the initial getting started video. So if you wanna kinda of see how I set that up, definitely feel free. Uh, but in this case, I did not use the Ionic CLI to create this project. I basically just created an, an Angular application using uh, Angular CLI to build it. And what we want to be able to do is, is take this app and get it into a mobile setup. So to do that and kind of help with some of the look and feel of it, I did add Ionic Framework to this. This is not necessary for your web applications. I just find that it looks like a little bit better. So I'll actually pull it over here. Here we go. So as you can see, just a blank application, called it blank, ready to get started with an app. It's nothing, nothing special. We're not looking to do anything com complicated. I just want to show that you could take an existing web application and get it on mobile. So let's go ahead and start with the necessary commands to get this going. So the first thing you want to do is you want to have um, your IDE open with your actual application, and then you want to get terminal configured or set up. You want to have terminal open. 
And so the first thing we're going to do is, is install capacitor core, and that's going to be using NPM. Okay. So npm install capacitor core. Okay, that's good. I will say I do already have these installed, so you might go through different steps and process to get this going, but just be sure to go through the prompts if you are prompted for anything here. So now that we have that done, we want to, um, so I installed the capacitor CLI. So now we can actually start running capacitor commands against our existing web application. So now I'm gonna go back into WebStorm. So we're gonna open up another terminal window. We're gonna do mpx cap init. What is the name of your application? We're gonna use the default and luckily because I'm using an Angular application, it already picks up the name of my application. So we're just gonna roll with that. Uh, should there be a package ID for your app? If you're not familiar with mobile app development, package ID, at least in the sense of iOS and Apple, this is kind of what I'm more familiar with than with Android. Um, so package ID is essentially what the app store uses to identify your application in the app store. So it has to be unique and it has to be, you know, pretty much geared towards what your application is. Um, and you want to use reverse domain name notation in order to get that right and that it just ensures that you're not like you know doing anything crazy here i'm personally not deploying this application um but we'll go ahead and do something similar so we'll do io dot ionic dot uh test capacitor app cool so that is configured now what we wanna do is, is create our Android and iOS projects. So luckily if you go to the docs, and I'll show them off right here. If you go to the docs, you'll be able to see npm i at capacitor slash Android at capacitor slash iOS. That will get you going real quick. So let's go ahead and install those. And then we actually wanna add the mobile builds to our project. And that is gonna be done with MPX cap add Android. So this will add Android to our project and it may take a minute to like configure and set up and do all that. So don't be discouraged if it does take a few minutes. We'll add iOS, that's good. And then we actually have to sync our web build of the project to our Android and iOS project so that it actually shows up when we try to run it. Um, and that's gonna be with MPX cap sync. If you do not run cap sync, MPX cap sync, it will not work. You'll just get a blank project. Ask me how I know that. <laughs> so I ran the cap sync command and as you can see, I'm getting an error. So let's go ahead and troubleshoot and see what we're running into. The first thing is, is my build folder. So I got to make sure that I'm pointing at the right spot. Uh, I basically, so when you set up a capacitor application, it looks for a www folder directory uh, in order to like sync everything to iOS and Android. When you do the cap sync command, I'm using an Angular application. It does not have a www directory. Uh, it's a disk folder. So I, you basically have to change it to dist and then whatever the name of uh, your project is, or in this case folder, because I've in the disk folder, there's capacitor dash test dash app folder directory so that we want to make sure that we're pointing it to the right spot. Uh, secondly, so I tried to run the cap sync command and now I'm running into an issue after kind of reading the error and I kind of want to go through this. It says the version of the core simulator framework installed on this Mac is out of date and not supported by this version of Xcode. So this is good, uh, not really good because you know it's an error, but it's good because I want to be able to show you this is what happens when your Xcode and Android Studio and stuff is out of date. You got to make sure everything is up to date um, or at least follow the documentation as of this recording to see what version you're on to make sure that you're compliant with what's happening. So I am currently in the process of updating the simulator. This is gonna take a couple of minutes, so I will be right back. Okay, so I'm showing the updates are complete. Let's try this again and see if it fixes it. So MPX cap sync. Hey, we're synced. <laughs> 
Uh, this is the fun part, right? Whenever you're doing cross-platform development, you got to like make sure everything is in sync and talking to each other, because if it's not, you're going to have a bad time. But we're not having a bad time. We got it figured out. So we are ready to move on to the next step. Uh, so we have Android, iOS. So I think we can go forward and run our application. So for opening it in Xcode, you want to do MPX, MPX, cap, open, iOS, and this should open up Xcode. Okay, it's indexing, processing. And then if this is your first time using Capacitor or Xcode and like trying to use mobile things, um, it does take a few minutes for everything to sync and everything to open, especially if you run into the problem like I did where I had to update all of my applications. Um, it's got to go through its necessary steps. But um, you want to make sure that everything is set up and configured with Xcode and Android Studio before you try to use Capacitor because it can lead to some really weird and obscure issues um, that are hard to diagnose. So if everything's up to date, and I can speak specifically to Xcode, uh, sometimes when you open up Xcode, there's an update to a simulator or there's an update to a package, and it just wants you to update that one portion. You want to make sure you don't have any prompts when you um, are setting up other than selecting a project. If it's asking you to update or install something, make sure you check like, yes, I want it, or no, I don't want it, and you know, make sure that it doesn't interfere with your projects. It's sometimes hard to tell and you just got to, you know, work your way through it, but it's overall not bad. Okay. So it looks like we're, we're ready to go. Um, in this case, um, I'm not going to walk through how to use Xcode. It can be pretty dense for all intents and purposes, uh, with our application. All you need to see is that does it run in Xcode? And the way that you do that is if you check there's, well, you have to go through two steps. Make sure that it's uh, check your app and then what simulator you're on. So I have iPhone 15 Pro set up as my simulator, but there's a whole bunch and you can select which ones you want to run it against. Uh, I feel like this is just keep it on iPhone 15 Pro and then there's the play button. So we'll click the play button and run the simulator and I will be back in a few minutes. There we go. There's our application. It is showing up in the simulator. So luckily, opening this up in Android Studio is also fairly straightforward, just like iOS. So we're going to do MPX, cap, open, Android. And what this will do is, is open up Android Studio. So now there are a couple of commands that you can run to open up directly in a simulator. I tend not to like using those commands, not because they're not helpful or like they don't work or anything along those lines. I just like being able to see the error messages and messages that are coming out of um, Android Studio and in Xcode. Um, you sometimes get a little bit more information, but it's definitely not a requirement. Uh, the other thing is if you happen to have issues with versioning and all this other stuff, uh, you don't always get the error message back. So this helps me keep everything organized and know like what I'm doing in the actual platforms. And of course, if you want to make edits or changes, you can also do that here as well, because these are actual working Android iOS applications. Let's try running our application and we're going to run it, our app, Pixel 3 API 31. So if you check out the initial video on getting started, I showed how to run through, like diagnose some issues. If you're running into issues with the emulator there, check it out. I'll put the timestamps. Uh, I'll, I'll note the, the timestamp so you can check it out. So let's go ahead and do our run tool. And I will be back in a few minutes when this opens up. There we go. And then there is our application right there. And that, my friends, is how you take a web application and turn it into a cross-platform application that can work on iOS or on Android. If you like what you saw in this video, please be sure to like and subscribe to the Ionic YouTube channel. Otherwise, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys later.